arches and then the arches. This is going to be the second time we're going to the arches. Hopefully this time we'll get through the gate. Let's go down that road. Hello faithful people, I'm Maureen. I'm Gary. And we are Roads of Faith. We are in Moab, Utah. Almost missed the arches there. I thought that was a tiny house. Be a cute little tiny house. <laughs> yep. It's a wicked brew. See? Arches auto repair. Yesterday we had our truck fixed. And today, so we got the air conditioning back. Yeah. And today, yeah, with 90 degree heat, that's appreciated. Today we're going to go here to get the RV fixed. Then we're going to go to the arches. So what happened was Gary had to make a sharp turn because of road construction. And this thing here came out. And that is what locks the brakes when there's a problem. And so it did not lock the brakes on the RV. We've cleaned them up quite a bit right now, but they were just black and they were smoking like crazy. All of them. This one's really bad. This one was smoking the worst. And that was just as we had gone into the entry of the Arches National Park. See how it's even taken some of the paint off. So, yeah, we're going to hopefully get it fixed today so we can get on the road again. It was a little noisy out there with the traffic. So what happened was we got into this traffic area, this road construction area, and that thing popped out and we didn't know it. And we drove several miles. And then we saw that there was no line at the arches. And so we went back, we turned around and went back to it. And then when we stopped at the gate, to get our information and everything, it wouldn't move. It was locked up and we could not go anywhere. And we sat there for almost an hour. And they were smoking in the meantime. Gary was on the phone. They were trying to get a tow truck, which would have cost an enormous amount of money and it would have been more damage probably to the RV is what we were told to. We had two wonderful rangers from the park that were very helpful and they told us about a couple places that we could go. We talked to the one guy and he said he could get us in right away on Monday morning. Well then, he, in fact, he was gonna come to the RV park. He told us which RV park to go to because it was close to where he was. <clears throat> it was all working out well. So there she is. We'll be back for you, Faith. This is what was going on at the time. <laughs> and when Gary came out of the gas station, which is what we came into Moab for, stick a gas, then we were gonna go to the arches, and then we were going to turn or just continue on from there. But things changed. We've been in a safe place all this time. The campground that the first mechanic told us about ended up being one of the least expensive in town, we were told afterwards. And it was a very nice one. We had fantastic neighbors on either side of us. It was great. And they had kids and dogs. So, I mean, it was just, it was awesome. 
And then the guy, the first guy ended up not being able to come. The air conditioning had gone out on the truck just as we were getting into the RV park. So the, the second mechanic from Arches is who fixed our air conditioning in just a couple of hours. All he had to do was recharge it. I mean, oh my gosh. We had a van one time that it cost over $800 to get that air conditioning fixed. So we were just like, ah! <laughs> and the bill came to $110. So that was pretty sweet. Gary was doing business with him yesterday about the air conditioner. He asked him if he could take a look at our wheels and on the RV. And so he is fixing it today. He says he will have it done today. So we are going to the Arches National Park again without the RV behind us. And hopefully we will get through the gate no problems this time. <laughs> It's actually going to be easier going in without the RV behind us. So things ended up working out probably for the best anyway. Maintain social distance. Drink plenty of water. We got a lot of water along. We don't need a map. We have one from the first time. The first day of the National Park reopening was on May 29th, and they had, within the first three hours, they had to close the gates. <laughs> we had the same girl. <laughs> She's like, oh no. <laughs> but she was happy to hear that we were getting our RV fixed today, and that we didn't need a map, because we already have one. Anyway, the first day it was, uh, they had to close within the first three hours because there were so many people and they told people to go someplace else, come back another time. They, they counted vehicles from 46 states. If only we could have gotten through. Yeah, if only we could have gotten through. We might have been able to do that, to unhitch, which is a good idea. And then we saw some class A's that probably left their motorhome here in the parking lot and took their cars, their toes. Just something to think about because the parking lots in the park are smaller from what we've been told and so if you can leave your RV behind, it is best to do that. like a big pile of wet sand just plot clay yeah just somebody put a bunch of clay together must been, grandkids with must have been the day God was playing with the clay <laughs> it's a switchback road going up like a camel sort of kind of use your imagination
trail and it was a mile I believe it was a mile in and a mile out and they recommend that you wear well, of course wear comfortable shoes when you come here don't wear flip-flops and also that we had so many other ones that we want to see and we want to try to get through this before it really gets hot it's gonna be 95 today so we're just trying to take in as much as we can without wearing ourselves out plus we get to see it all on the way back again because this is in and in out the same road that's true yep. the three gossips and this one I think this one here is the organ or it might be that one which one looks more like an organ to you <laughs> lost a few things over the years. Sheepdog. Sheepdog. Yeah, it's a sheepdog rock. <laughs> we're going to rename a bunch of them here while we're here. I don't know if that one has a name, but it, to me it looks like a big ship. Big cruise ship. There might be a secret to that on the other side.
basically you go through like a maze between all those things and it's more like going through a canyon and and through really tight narrow spaces and it's actually quite cool in there they say but it's a very very challenging one you have to have a either a park ranger guide or somebody I guess you have to have a well yeah definitely have to have a permit for it but it's closed for some reason I'm not sure why it didn't say This isn't what we expected to see when we got back this afternoon. I'm still waiting for Gary to tell me exactly what's going on, but he did say we're going to have to go to a hotel tonight. 